Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Ask Bob, where I get to answer questions posed by our Elements fans. Today's question comes in from our Facebook page, and we recently posted a call for questions for me, Ask Bob, and uh, I'm going to pick this one from Maria. Maria would like to learn how to match the exposure when she combines elements from two different photos. Hey Maria, great question. It's actually pretty common that folks like to put different photos together and make it look like both folks were standing in the same picture. Thanks for posting your images. I think it's much better to do demos with your photos instead of mine. So let's get going. Let me open up Photoshop Elements 14. And let me bring in your photos. I happen to have downloaded them from Facebook, so I'm just going to select both of them and just drag and drop them into Photoshop Elements. Here we go. We've got them both open now. So let's see. The first thing that we need to do is make some room in one of the shots so that we can copy the person from the other shot in, and there's actually room in the photo to fit them. Uh, so I'm going to use this one as my sort of master image, if you will, and make it a little wider. That's pretty easy to do. I just come up to the Image menu, down to Resize, and pick Canvas Size. And what changing the canvas size will do will just give me some more room to work with inside our photo. So we want to change the width, make it a little wider. Uh, the exact number doesn't matter. I'll just maybe change it to 14 inches. It doesn't really matter exactly what the uh, size is because uh, we'll do some cropping later. The other important thing is this anchor section. We want to add more space, in this case, over to the right of your original image. So if I click that square right there, it means all the extra space that we're adding is going to be either top and bottom or on the right. And just set that up, click OK, and now we've got more space over here on the right to work with. Okay, so the next step that we want is to use actually one of the guided edits that we added recently. And it's in the Photo Merge section. It's called Photo Merge Compose. And Photo Merge Compose is all about taking two shots and combining them into one. So I'm just going to click on Photo Merge Compose. Uh, it'll get started. This guided edit, uh, like all the guided edits, sort of gives you the instructions, step-by-step -step instructions of what to do uh, and what order to do them. So as you can see, step one is we just want to start with the image that we would like to extract something from. So I'm going to drag and drop this image. There we go. We want to pull the man out of this image. Uh, step two, there's a number of different selection tools uh, that we would use to select what we want to copy out of this image. So I'm going to start with the quick selection tool. There's a, a really brief overview to teach you how to use the quick selection tool if you don't already know. Uh, and all you have to do is drag over your image. Now let's see, I want it to be a little bit bigger. So as we drag, we get some good, good selection going on. There we go, something like that. So you can see as I'm dragging, the quick selection tool is doing edge detection and trying to select the edges of the object that I'm dragging over. So just a little bit of dragging around. Uh, if I get too much, you've got a couple areas where I actually have too much because I over dragged. Uh, I just switch to subtract right over here in the right. Uh, the selection mode, switch from add to subtract, and then drag over those areas that I don't want. If I need to, I can make my brush smaller. And so I'm just getting some real nice selection. I think over here near his shoulder, I got a little too much. Uh, and actually right here, I want to deselect this section under his arm uh, so the background shows through. Okay, so that's a quick rough selection. Uh, we can always change things later if we need. Uh, but I just want to kind of get a quick selection to start with. Now, one of the things that you may notice is we didn't get the hair selected properly. Uh, hair is a really hard thing to uh, do good selections on. So we have this tool over here on the right called the Refine Selection Brush. Again, once I click on it, I get a little tutorial to teach me how to use it. Uh, I'm just going to click OK because I'm going to show you. And basically what you do is hover the center of that brush right over top of the edge of your selection. And click your mouse down and hold and just sort of drag around the hair. And you can see some highlighting going on around the hair area. Let go and now we've got a nice mass created around his hair so we can pull in some of that uh, kind of frizziness. All right, once we get our selection done, we want to come down here to the bottom right and click Next. 
And Photoshop Elements will then do the work of copying him out of that first photo and pasting him into the second photo. We can use our Move tool over here on the top left to move him where we want him to be, make him bigger, smaller, uh, all those kind of things. Basically get him exactly where we want uh, before we move any further. So I'm going to put him about right there. Now it kind of looks like he's standing uh, in front of what I'm assuming is you, although I don't really know. Uh, but he's standing in front. Uh, I actually want to do something interesting to make it look like he's standing behind um, the other person in the, in the photo. And that's what this part right here is over on the right, Hide and Reveal. So if I click on the Hide button, uh, set the hardness to something kind of on the low end. I, I kind of want it soft and maybe make my brush size a little bit bigger, I can paint over sections that I want to hide. And if I do that, kind of do some rough here, kind of to see your hand here, there we go, and then maybe come back and hit reveal, use a smaller brush and maybe a little harder brush, uh, come in and paint the edges and paint him back in to where it looks like he's standing behind instead of standing in front. So that's kind of a neat little trick that you can use to, to adjust uh, how things line up as you composite multiple images together. Okay, there we go. Now we've got our two subjects in the same photo. That's really good. Uh, we're going to hit next because the next step, step four in Photo Merge Compose, is to actually start to deal with exactly what you asked about, which is how do I adjust kind of the exposure and the tonal information of these two different subjects because they were captured uh, in different shots and the lighting was just a little bit different. So the first step in that is just to click this button here, Auto Match Color Tone. Why not let the software do all the work for us if it can? And so if I click Auto Match Color Tone, Photoshop Elements will analyze both photos and try and make them look similar. Uh, Sometimes it does a really great job, sometimes it uh, does a so-so job, sometimes it does a horrible job. And that's why we've given you these uh, sliders here. So once we let the software do the best it can, uh, you really can use your own judgment to make it look exactly like you want. So what I want to do is actually adjust the temperature just a little bit. Uh, that's this slider here. I want to go to the right, which is going to warm it up a little bit, bring a little more reds and oranges into the picture so that the skin tones uh, of the man uh, look like the woman. And I can adjust luminance, which is kind of like brightness. I can crank it way to the left and darken things up. I can crank it way to the right, brighten things up. Or, you know, I just want to do maybe a very slight variation of where the software thought luminance should be set uh, to get them looking very similar. And I can also adjust contrast and saturation if I want, but it's looking pretty good right here. Uh, we'll fine tune it later. Uh, I'll show you a different technique. Okay, so once you're done with step four, uh, hit next. And then we have an option of what do we want to do with this image. What I want to do is continue editing in expert mode. And we'll jump over to the main editing environment uh, with our newly created photo selected in the expert edit mode. And you can see over here on the right, we've got a couple layers that were created for us. Uh, one layer with our background and this, the top layer uh, with the man that's composited on top. And I can hide that layer by just clicking the, the eyeball to hide that layer temporarily. And I actually want to do that. So let me hide that layer because now I want to work on the background a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is grab my selection marquee selection tool here on the left and just come up here about at the edge there and drag from that top down here and kind of grab a bit of this background uh, with the column or with this pillar in place. I'm going to do an edit, copy, and then an edit, paste. And what that has done is created a new layer, you can see over here on the right, called Layer 2. Let me hide my background layer. So you can see it's just that section that I had selected and copied and pasted. Uh, it's created a new layer for me. So with that layer selected, I want to come up here to Image, into Rotate, and then down here this Flip Layer Horizontal. So just go ahead and select Flip Layer Horizontal. That layer will be flipped horizontally. Now I want to turn my other layers back on so we can see what's going on. And now with layer 2 selected, grab my Move tool. That's this one right here over on the left. 
and just drag this to the right until we get it past his elbow. We just want to make sure we have enough to cover where he's standing. So it looks like he's now standing also in front of a column, basically in front of a space between two columns. All right, let's hide our uh, man again because now we need to do some fixing of this layer two that we use to fill in the empty background that we didn't have in our original image. Okay, so step one in fixing the background is come back over here to our marquee selection tool and then kind of hover right up here on the very top left of our layer two, drag down to the bottom and then over to the right, but not all the way into the column, just into some of that background area. Because now what I want to show you is this really cool tool down over here in Modify. We've got something that we call the Recompose tool. So with an area selected like that, click on the Recompose tool and then hover over the little handle here that's on the edge and just drag that sideways. And what Photoshop Elements will do at this point is kind of stretch that image but do it in a very intelligent way. So it's not just simply scaling, it's trying to do some things without distorting your image. So just drag it over till it at least covers um, or touches up to where the other image is. Click the green check mark to accept those changes. And then maybe just select menu and deselect so that the marching ants go away. Something like that. So there we go, we've got the uh, this layer two adjusted so it's now filling in all of the background. Uh, let me double click the hand so it'll scale it down a little bit so we can see everything. There we go. All right, so let's show our guy again, right? Even though, you know, this isn't perfect where the two images meet, that's okay because our guy's gonna be covering that up. Now what we need to do is over here on the right, fix the column uh, where we made the copy from the other image. So again, let me hide the guy. Uh, just so we can see what's going on. Make sure layer two is selected by clicking on it. And now what we want to use is this tool right here, the clone stamp tool. So go ahead and click on the clone stamp tool. Uh, bring your mouse over here to the, the column of bricks. Uh, in this case, kind of hover over this intersection of the grout lines and hold your Alt or Option key down, depending upon whether you're on Windows or Mac and the cursor will change into this little target cursor. Basically what you're doing is you want to click on a spot that you want elements to copy from. So I'll click on right, right here, that intersection of the grout, and then let go, and now you can see the clone stamp tool as I move the mouse around. It's going to stamp on pixels from that area of my image onto wherever I start clicking. So I'm going to go down to this next grout line, click, and just start clicking around you can click and drag, or you can just click. Uh, if you click and drag too far, it's going to start to pick up the old pixel, so you don't want to do that. So you probably just want to do some, some clicking until you get all of that covered up. So it looks like nobody is standing in front of this pillar. They're just standing uh, on that pillar to the left. We've got an empty pillar. Okay, there we go. So that's the clone stamp tool. And now we can turn layer one back on so we can see our guy, perfect. Uh, now we just wanna crop out some of this extra white space. So the crop tool over here, uh, will do that. Photoshop Elements will suggest some crops for us. So you can pick from one of the suggestions uh, or pick a suggestion as a starting point and then drag uh, the edge in. So we wanna drag the edge in to get rid of that white space, maybe drag it down a little bit uh, and maybe even up a little bit. We don't wanna cop or crop off the top of uh, his head and of course that special hair uh, that we took care of earlier in the photo merge compose tool. So set your crop rectangle kind of how you want it. Again click the green check mark to accept the crop and there you go we've got your picture pasted together um, with the two images. The exposure is pretty well adjusted. We took care of most of it in photo merge compose but in case you want to do some further adjustments I'll show you one more kind of trick, uh, and that's to go ahead and click on layer one all the way at the top, and then this little icon right here is how we create what's called an adjustment layer. So go ahead and click on that and come down to levels. And so add a levels adjustment layer. You can see it's added a new layer on the very top. And levels is kind of a way to adjust uh, brightness and contrast, but you're able to, to have some fine control over adjust 
sorry, over adjusting just the shadows or the highlights or the midtones. So in this uh, little thing here, this uh, histogram is what it's called, uh, there's some controls. Uh, first thing I want to do down here in the bottom of this pop-up window is click that little check mark. And what that does is causes the adjustments I make to the histogram to only apply to the layer right below it. So if I drag this center one, which adjusts the brightness of the midtones, if I drag it to the left, you see we're only adjusting the guy. We're not adjusting the whole image. So I can adjust that a little bit. Maybe I want to brighten him up a little bit. Um, for the shadow, oops, for the shadows, maybe I want to just kind of darken the shadows a touch. Uh, leave the highlights alone. They're looking pretty good to get it to match. So if I leave the channel to RGB, it's affecting all colors. If I want to adjust a specific color, like maybe red, uh, I can switch the channel to red. And now when I make these adjustments, it's only adjusting the red channel. So I can push a bunch of red in. I can pull a bunch of red out. Uh, in this case, I want to just maybe add a little more red to give it that sort of warmer feel to get the skin tones to match. So mess around with these until it looks like you want it to look. And you can go ahead and close this window when you're done. And now we've got that adjusted. Now one last thing, uh, you can see around his shoulders, there's a little bit of a halo effect. If I zoom in some, uh, you can see that. And that happened from when we did the selection. We didn't do a very good job. I was kind of rushing through it. Um, but we can, of course, fix that up. If I come down and click on layer one to select it, and then just grab my eraser over here on the left, uh, down in my tool options, I probably want to pick a soft brush for my eraser and something fairly small. Turn the size down a little bit. Uh, turn the opacity down a little bit uh, so it really becomes kind of a soft brush. And then just drag over the edge here to erase that halo just a little bit. So since the opacity is turned down a little bit, it may take several drags to get that. But you can see with just some clicks and some dragging of my mouse, if I make my brush even smaller, I can really get in and do some of the fine details of removing that halo that's around the edge of my selection. So you can see I'll fix up the, uh, the left side here, uh, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to bother with all that stuff over on the right. When you're doing this at home, uh, fix all this stuff up as well. Uh, but I can look around, scroll down a little bit, maybe down here on the left. I'll fix that up around his hand a little bit, just trying to get that halo gone. There we go. Now double click on my hand tool uh, to zoom back out and we have it done. So there you go, Maria. That's how we would uh, copy something out of one photo, composite it into another photo, uh, adjust the uh, brightness, the exposure, the, the temperature to get the coloring right, all those kind of things. And then come in once we're done in that photo merge exposure uh, guided edit, come here into expert mode, work with the layers that were created by the guided edit, and really do some final touch-ups to make things look good. I uh, hope that helps, and uh, thanks for posting the question, and enjoy using Photoshop Elements. Take care.